Hey everyone, welcome back to Full Throttle Driving Academy. I'm Brian. I'm Dana. And we're today going to narrate the race from the Porsche Owners Club at Button Willow Counters Clock Counterclockwise. This is March of 2024, and we're trying a new format today. So the new format is this. Brian did some videos recently where he talked through his race craft and he was talking through a race and saying, here's what I did, here's what I was thinking. And it was brilliant. And we have had phenomenal uh, response to that. Some people have said it would be really helpful to have another person maybe asking, how did you know this? How did, why did you do that? And because I share the car with Brian, um, I'm familiar with it and I just became familiar with this track. So we're at Button Willow counterclockwise and we're going to talk you through one of Brian's races. All right. So what you're looking at here is the formation lap with two corners to go. I'm lined up in seventh position, which is a pretty poor qualifying slot. But, you know, uh, some of the folks didn't finish yesterday. I won't point all of them out, but they are on some brand new tires, several of them in the group in front of me. So they qualified quite well, as you might expect. So I'll walk you through kind of my mindset as we uh, go through the race. Preparing for the start, we're gonna bunch up a little bit closer and I'm gonna hit the start button here and you can see how we do it. So you're on the formation lap and I'm curious, you rarely come out seventh in you know in qualifying. You're usually up yeah. front. So how are you feeling right now thinking, oh crap, I'm really far behind. Are uh, you right now thinking of your strategy to get ahead? Yeah, I'm, I was pretty discouraged to get that. And I, I just, I know this is gonna be a, a battle of tire degradation. We're coming around the last corner, by the way. So now what I'm trying to do is, is pick a gap. So you can see here, the drivers, the front driver and the ones on the right have are kind of creating what's called an echelon. They're, the, the driver behind is moving to the right, then the one back further back is moving more to the right. Instead of moving more to the right to try to see the flag worker who's going to throw the green flag, I move to the left in the middle so I can try to shoot the gap. And we also also should point out we didn't have our radios working, so I couldn't even say green, green, green. He just he was going on fail here. Right. So in seventh, my goal on the start is really um, the flag worker is somewhere up here. I want to try to look for any body movement and try to see before I see the green flag, I want to see a shoulder or a head fake or something. So I know he's committed to throwing the green flag so I can get a jump and try to get a good clean start. And on this particular race, I do get a really good start. And you can see the flag right there, green. I already passed one car. I think I'm gonna get by the one on the left. So what are you thinking zone. right now? Are you thinking I'm gonna go left? I'm gonna go in the middle? What are you thinking? I'm thinking I've got the inside, it's my corner. I pass another car there. So now I'm already in fourth, I started seventh. It's a good it's a good run. Now the car in the front there, we know her quite well. She's a pro driver and she's on brand new tires, did not race yesterday. I have a feeling she is gonna check out. The one in second place, he won the points championship, I think the last seven or eight years in a row in this class. This class is 991.2 spec class, brand new for 2024. All these cars are identical. We have excruciating specs. We all have to be the same. So now it's just like, okay. You're heading into Phil's Hill here. And yeah. this is one that people don't go fast enough on. So what's your strategy coming over? I see you track out way more than everybody else. What's up with that? Well, you want to widen the track as much as you can. So you're turning the steering wheel less. You're going to use less tire that way. You're going to allow it to get to throttle sooner. I'm going to try to drive really efficiently in this race because I know that this track consumes tires. It's like sandpaper. So what I am looking for now, um, the driver in front is already clearly faster than the field and in second place pulling away. So now I'm like, well, what are we racing for? We're racing for third or fourth place, most likely unless the two in the front have massive tire degradation, make a mistake or have a mechanical failure. All right, so we're coming up to <clears throat> the last few turns of this course. This cotton corners, so you wanna track all the way out on the exit of that. You can do a pass here. This is a good spot on this straightaway to pass. And then on this next corner, if you duck way inside here, it's a good spot to pass people if they shoot that overshoot the braking zone because it's downhill. everyone does. Everyone. <laughs> I've done it many times. In the course of this race, Pretty much everybody makes a mistake on that corner at least once in the race and they break too late, it's downhill. So this is your last corner coming into the straight. This is what you call the most important corner. That one is, in my view, it's one yeah, one of the most because it leads onto the longest straight on the course. Um, these cars are all identical speeds though, so there's not there's not a lot of passing going on. Um, so now, you're in the S's. Coming into the S's, um, the problem is what you can't see I have a very fast driver directly on my butt right now. 
who didn't finish the race yesterday. He's on very fresh rubber. He qualified significantly faster than me and he is riding me like there's no tomorrow. So I am playing defense right now in addition to trying to keep up with that white car in front of me. So it's like you're watching your mirrors and you're trying to catch the guy in front of you. I'm also noticing your line is very different than the guy in front of you, for instance. Mm -hmm. And I know you love to track all the way out as you're doing right there. Right. Good job, don't wanna to go too far out. Um, but how are they so fast when they're driving a completely different line? So, you know, as we say in some more videos, what's one of the videos we talk about? It's not about the line, it's more about driving at the limit. As long as you're driving the limit, right? <laughs> yeah. You, you can be offline. So how do you know where your limit is? I mean, obviously you have to exceed your limit to know your limits, but how far do you know, how do you know how far you can push it? In these cars, it's rather difficult because you have 500 horsepower. You, coming out of a corner in second gear, you can spin the wheels. Uh, you are going extremely fast in a corner like Riverside, you know, probably around 110 miles per hour. Uh, you, you gotta feel it. You're really feeling the car, you're feeling what's happening underneath your body, your torso. You're feeling the vibrations in the steering wheel, you know, I mean. All right, so you're in a solid third here, but pretty far from the guy behind, or in front of you. I'm in fourth. Oh, fourth, I'm sorry. So, you're, what are yeah, you thinking right now? Are you thinking I'm, I'm never gonna catch I, him unless he makes a mistake, or I'm what? Think, I'm thinking I'm about to get past on the inside right now. Oh, oops. There right you there. go. Because, and that's, we know him real well, he's a friend of ours, all these guys are friends, um, and gals, by the way. Um, he's on very fresh tires, he is going to be faster. He, he only finished three laps of the race yesterday and had a mechanical failure. Brand new rubber, he's gonna have more mechanical grip, which is the way this spec class works, so. I have another question then. Mm -hmm. So you keep talking about tires, and by the way, everybody, I'm gonna shut up here and let Brian do his magic and walk you through his race crap, but, You've got, you're talking a lot about tires. The cars are identical, 991.2s, and how much of this comes down to the driver or the balls the driver has or technique or skill, since obviously you're all amazing drivers, but you keep coming back to tires. Is that the, mm. the differentiator? Well, the way I know that it, a lot of this comes down to tires is because when we do warm ups on Friday, we're all running used tires from the previous race weekend. And if we do warm-up sessions, we usually run four, four or five sessions on the entire day. And all of the, the top five drivers are typically within a half a second of each other. It's just that close. And in any given warm-up session, somebody can have the fastest time. The difference happens when people throw on brand new tires for qualifying. And the reality is we're just going to have to budget for that. I'm sorry to tell Donations you. Donations are welcome. <laughs> yeah. We just can't afford new tires ever. We will accept sponsorships if anyone wants to. Yokohama is the tire we use. Anyway. Okay, so you're again solidly in fourth. Yeah, fifth. so. Not fifth? Right. And just past you, I'm in so. fifth. So, but now I have another objective. Um, I know the red car is going to be faster than the car in front, the white car. Because again, he's fresh of rubber. When he catches the white car, those two guys are going to battle and they might slow each other down. Gives me an opportunity to catch both of them. And maybe they make a mistake and I can squeeze by one or two of them. So. Now it's just like drive clean, drive hard, try to catch those two guys. I missed that apex right there by a mile, by the way. Loved your critique, my mistakes. No dinner for you. <laughs> Look at the lap time too, 159. Yesterday in the race, I did, a, I did two laps in the 155s on these exact same set of tires. So that is again, a four second loss. So you're doing about 125 at your peak through the S's which is darn fast. And it's about four and five miles per hour slower than I was yesterday through the S's. Exact same driving conditions, just difference in tires. Honestly, I keep harping on that, but that it, that's really what it comes down to right now. All right, so again, you're taking a totally different line. Um, you, you tell me, fly over the top, it's blind, I know you can't see, but just track out. I'm a huge proponent, and Ross Bentley taught, taught, taught us this in all of his books. The, the, to the extent you can use every inch of the track width. You bought it. You bought it, use it. And you're gonna, you're gonna save your tires. You can get to throttle sooner. You hit your apexes and you track out. You're gonna be able to get to throttle sooner and. 
And right now you have the luxury of driving, mm. sorry, I will shut up, no. of driving a time trial line, basically, because you yeah. don't have anybody right in front well, of you or behind you, I don't think. Well, right now, there's another driver coming up fast on me who also didn't finish the race yesterday and is on fresh driver. We had a lot of attrition yesterday. It's the black car who started in front of me. I think he qualified in fourth, I think. Um, he's right on my butt coming up fast. So now I'm, on, I'm still trying to catch the two in front of me and I'm gonna have to play a bit of defense here, probably starting around lap five. And how do you prevent watch or driving in your mirrors? I'm terrible about driving I, in my mirrors. I've learned the hard way. If you're gonna drive in your mirrors, you glance very briefly when you're exiting the corner, coming onto a straightaway, you just give it a quick look, see where they are, and then coming into the end of a straightaway, you give another quick glance in your side view mirror, see if they're trying to fake you out, come in on the inside. And then you, you spend 95% of your attention though, looking forward and driving. So I have a question about that, about somebody coming up on you and race crafts, specifically racing, not time trialing necessarily. Right. And I don't know if you've got any video here where somebody is coming up on you or where you're passing somebody, but I always worry that they're not paying attention and I'm going to pass them on the inside and they're going to bump right into me. Does that cross your mind or do yeah. you just have to look beyond that and say, I hope they're a good driver? You've got to know the people around you. If you dive bomb somebody on the inside of a corner, the chances of a collision are profoundly higher. You have to present yourself. You have to tell the car you're coming and you really need to be really alongside of them to be super safe so they can see you outside, not just the mirror. That's what I like to do because I've had incidents before. I've been hit, I've been rear-ended. I've dive bombed people before when I was, you know, earlier in my driving career. Now look, these two guys, the red car caught. Now the white car is playing defense. What I mean by that, he's driving the middle of the track. So you're allowed to do one move. After you exit a corner, you can move to where you want to be. You're not allowed to weave and you're not allowed to react to the car behind you. But he's driving the middle and the red car can't get around. That's perfectly legal. It's not going to last forever though, and I know that, so. And how did you catch up to them? What was your strategy Well, there? again, the white car now is playing defense, so these lap times are going to fall off a cliff. He's going to be slow. The red car is only as fast as the white car, just because he's behind him. And look at our lap time. Yeah. Well, that was a 157.8. <laughs> not, not bad. I mean, but it's going to be hard to sustain that. So again, the tires are going to degrade. The lap times are going to get a little bit slower. Now, had I had a radio, if you'd been on the radio, I would know how far the first, second, and third place cars are, and I would know their lap times, and I would know if they're getting slower, and by what extent, and that would help me understand how hard I can push, and if it's worth pushing or not, or if I should try to, you know, try to stick it out here and try to get maybe a fourth place or something, fourth or fifth. So I'm gonna shut up and let you talk about your race craft because that's what people really want to learn from you, I think. You're so, you're such a great driver, and then you throw race craft in there on top of it and you are magical, but you also have a way of articulating this. So talk us through what you're thinking as you're approaching these guys here. Um, you know, when, you, when you're behind cars like this, you're not even as focused on the driving. It's weird, you kind of, you become so, uh, it becomes a pattern. I just get so in the zone. I. And I know my car can do almost what those cars are doing in front of me. So you kind of get in this rhythm, but you're watching, you know, he's, the red car was presenting himself, just trying to make the white car make a mistake. He, he wasn't going to pass in there. Right there, he's trying to get a, a good run on the exit of the second cotton, cotton corners. Obviously, he's going to try to get a run on the straightaway. I don't think he's going to get it done. The white car, again, really good defense. Yeah. And, but I'm, you know, now I'm right with them. If. Yeah, oh, good pass. oh, nice pass. That, All right, so that's right. what I worry about. Is the guy in the white car going to turn into him? or that? Yeah, that's what I worry about when I'm in a that, racing or passing situation. That was a clean pass, but also very aggressive, assertive. I love that because those guys, we all know each other now. This is the first season for all of us to get to know each other. This is only our third race weekend, but we've already we already know each other's tendencies. The, the red car did great right there, and the white car gave him plenty of racing room. I think that was really awesome. All right, so it looks like you're gaining mm -hmm. on this guy a little well, bit. Yeah, and that's kind of interesting because he he's won. He won 
in the previous race weekend at Spring Mountain, he won both races, right? And I was behind him in the first race at Spring Mountain, and I was hanging with him and, and the driver who won this race. I was kind of in third place the whole time. He's he's in fifth or fourth right now, I think. And um, it just goes to show you how competitive this class is, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. No? Yeah. Everyone's this, really. This class is really. It's competitive. it's stacked. It's stacked. The, the red car, the guy in front, he's won the uh, GT3 class of POC points championship. I think just last year. Um, so they're good. They're all great. All right. So we just went through Riverside, <clears throat> and now you're coming up to bus stop. And um, any particular strategy there that you would do, either racing or time trialing? Well, right now, again, the black car is right on my butt. So now what I'm doing is I'm 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 gonna start having to drive a little bit more in the middle of the track. Thankfully, the white car is starting to make a few mistakes. I think his tires are overheating. He went a little too deep there. Um, Ooh, pass him, pass him. It's, Go. It, it's, he moved over. That is not legal, <laughs> and he knows it. <laughs> You're not allowed to make a move in reaction to the driver, and he, he's an aggressive driver, but. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to pass him there. I mean, it's not like it, I wasn't even like alongside of him. All right. So now are you now thinking I'm gaining on this guy? I'm going to pass him on the straight. I was, what are you thinking? I was thinking because there's a driver behind me, I can't risk doing something stupid to try to pass the white card. Okay. Because if I do something really like uh, make a hard inside move and it's not successful, I could screw both of us up and then the black car could pass both of us and then we'd both be screwed. So my strategy at this point is maintain the speed as much as you can. Maybe the black car will fade behind me. So you're not always just thinking pass, pass, pass. No, you can't. Because if you just go super aggressive, this is, you know, it's, we're on lap eight. I think it's a 13 lap race. Anything can happen. You know, you can have a mechanical failure. You, Somebody could drive off the track. I guarantee you somebody went off the track in this race at least once, right? So you're just trying to, if you're right behind a driver, you can, they can, you're going to force them to make a mistake. God, I feel like you should just go, go. Right. Well, <laughs> what am I, you, I can't go past them on the inside of, of Riverside. Riverside. You're going hundred miles. There's no room. This Not is a narrow inside. track. I mean, let's face it, Buttonwill is hard to pass on. And you know, he's quicker than me in some sections, as you'll see. Are you anticipating, though, the next few turns and saying, maybe I can get him on turn whatever? At the, to, in order to pass him, he is going to have to make a half a second mistake. Like, he's going to have to, like, at, at, over this hill, he would have to overbreak and just overshoot it. See, I'm faster than him over the hill right there. I'm faster yeah. than him here. He went too far to the left. So I could make a slight run here. Go, go, go. And I'm gaining, 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 gaining. Now he didn't, you know, but there's just not quite enough speed for me to get by him. And you don't want to go deep in this braking zone right there because it's downhill and you can cause a collision. Multiple collisions happen over the weekend in that yeah, I braking zone, that right? A couple of times. It's a dangerous place to pass. And this corner normally would be a good place to pass exiting turn one, but he's got a little more grip than me He's always faster exiting that corner and he pulls a little bit away on the straightaway. So what can I do? Well, maybe he'll screw up this corner, right? Maybe he'll, see he turned in a little early there. But you missed your apex. I missed my apex. He's, he's at the limit, you know. He's always consistent through here. He's gonna be flying. We're all flying through here, running over the bumps. This is a very violent ride, by the way, going through the S's. He's getting a little squirrely there in the braking zone. He might screw up this corner. He's a little bit wide there. Yeah. He's not tracking out all the way, but he, he's getting to throttle just a hair sooner than I am. I think he's just got a tiny bit more rear end grip. Could be setup, could be rear wing, it could be sway bar, I don't know. Fly, fly. See, that Check was slow. Out. My min speed over that was only 67. It, on a good day, it would be more like 75. Now we're lapping people, so this could get interesting. If, if traffic holds him up, you know, maybe I could squirt by. Traffic always becomes a variable. So far, he's not making mistakes. Like, how much How much does driver fatigue play into racing? It's, in these cars, it makes a big difference. And in the spec boxer world, it makes a big difference too, because you're really fighting the car. You're driving at the limit the whole time. Um, 
I get tired. I mean, you get mentally tired. Well, see, I screwed that up. He's gonna pull away. How did you see that? I overcooked. I overcooked the cotton corner, and um, so as I come over this one, yeah. I break too late, go in there, and yeah. I skidded. Uh, I got sideways. And now I'm. But too, your line was good. That's yeah. I recovered fairly well, but look yeah. how he's gonna pull away. Where he's just, you know, now I'm gonna have to work hard to catch him. I'm getting him. Yeah, the black car though. Again, he's right. He's all over me. So you're kind of trying not to drive in your mirrors, but you are a little bit. I am. And he, the black car, thankfully, wasn't trying really anything super foolish or aggressive. Because some people, when, they, when they're behind you for this many laps, he was behind me, I think, from lap five. He's been behind me for five laps, like right on my butt. I wish I had a camera facing backwards. He's got to be getting frustrated because he can't afford that either. Donations are welcome. Yeah, because <laughs> the guy behind me is is in this race. He's faster than me. Like he, if he was, if he passed me, he would do faster lap times. I'm doing 159s. You know that's absurd. Like I, yeah. yesterday I was doing. Well, that's because your tires though. Because yeah. Yeah, and look at that. I totally overbroke there. See that? Yeah. I skidded out. The front end washed out on me. Um. So now I just have to realize. It's unlikely I'm going to pass the white car. I can try, and I will, but it's less likely as the race goes on because he is not making big mistakes. The driver behind me is pushing me so hard now that I'm just saying it would be a darn, it would be a really good finish if I can hold off this black car and finish in fifth place. Wow, that's which is kinda, that's not what your I'm thinking. normal top one, two, three. Mm, well, no, I mean. Every race is so different. Um, I remember when you used to say, when we were early in our motor motorsports days, you would say, "We need to get Hoosiers," and I was like, oh, <laughs> "We need Hoosiers." Ooh, mistake right there, the white car. Yeah, what did he do? He went way too wide. Um, you overcooked it. He's he's making mistakes now, and I'll catch him right here, ah. right on him again. But again, I can't risk. I don't really have it there. You can't dive bomb. I'm, it's, it's not good. I mean, I can try it here a little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. but I'm not next to him, right? Yeah. There, I didn't have it. Yeah. And I definitely don't want to force a collision. That's just dumb. Yeah. We're club racers. I don't. I didn't see any F1 scouts out here this weekend. But the trophy and the money was <laughs> amazing. I know. Did you see the cool plaque we got? It's like a <laughs> 10 cent aluminum and sticker. And we do appreciate a POC. It it's is nice. Great. Missed that apex, so did he though. He, he's, he's, he is, he's overdriving. He's trying to play defense on me now. And, and this that's comes, good. I this mean, this comes down to what I firmly believe is that you can have a lot of almost equal drivers, but the one with the bigger balls that just sucks it up and puckers it up and goes is often going to be the one that wins. You know, it's just these, these situations, almost equal drivers. Yeah. Tires and balls. Any, lots of people can win in this class, in this, in the POC. POC is just exceptional. It's really um, high bar. It's really, in this class in particular, it's just attracted top talent. And uh, again, the cars are equal. This is like racing spec Boxster, just with a, like three times more expensive budget. <laughs> Your times in practice were literally within a thousandth of a second from first yeah. time we did. I was right up there at the top of the pack in practice all week on Friday. So I, I mean, I'm feeling good about the driving. I'm not making big mistakes in this race. It's a clean, good, solid race. So you're gonna finish, you you know now you've only got a couple laps left. You're thinking, I'm gonna finish, what are we, in fifth? And well, I, I thought it's still gonna be really hard to hold the black car off. Okay, so you're still worried I'm, about I, the guy I, behind you. I mean, absolutely. And you'd be okay with fifth, even though that's not usually where you land? It's not ideal, but I mean, I'm going as hard as I can. Yeah. I, I, I look how well he's driving. He's I not he's not screwing up, no. right? Not great driver. And he he know he's playing good defense. He went wide there, yeah. but it doesn't hurt him. How does it not? I mean, it seems like the better that, the line, the faster you're gonna go. That corner is only like 45 miles per hour, so yeah. Harm me too much. 
He's pulling away on the straight. Did he get a better exit after the, after the last turn? He's probably two miles per hour faster on the exit. That's probably all it is, you know, and then he just carries that down the whole straightaway. I think we got two to go here. So we're all going a lot slower through the 127. No, that's faster than 28. Yeah, I kind of picked it up there. So that is the balls area. If there is one on this track, it's the S's. And Riverside. Riverside, though, you're, it's. And Phil Hill. Riverside is constant state. Yeah, I think Phil Hill is much more difficult to pick your speed over the top of the hill because you're coming in so hot. Look how fast we're going into the braking zone. 134, and then you got maximum braking and then you're like where do i lift but you go really that was far. fast that was yeah, a good, that was good 74 over the top of the hill so tracking out crucial now he screwed up he over broke there but now we're going to try to get some lap lap traffic would you ever just go balls out and not break into riverside i need to try lifting in riverside and i think i'm i'm definitely over breaking but lifting in a corner is a little scary too i think lifting though in these cars keeps it flatter and I think flatter is better. I think I'm over braking and, and getting oh, the car in its he nose. Missed. Oh, yeah. he missed his But you apex. can't pass there. Mm -hmm. That's Now what I can do is try to make him go wide on the exit of this, yeah. which he kind of did. Now I'm going to have a better exit here. Now how do you make him go wide? He, they just, they get, they get in their mirrors and they miss their braking zone by one tenth of a second. Mm -hmm. And he brakes too late. Like that one, he went a little wide, but... I but could, when you say I could make him go wide, do you intentionally pull up and do something to make him go wide? Well, you just see I'm on the right now. Yeah. He knows I'm there. And he went way down low. Now his line's completely screwed up. But so is mine. So now we both are slow. Now the black car has a good chance to pass me. See, that was a risk that I took. I sh that it didn't help me. It didn't hurt me. But that could have hurt me badly if, you know, the black car had passed me. Okay, so do you have any advice for strategy through the S's, for instance? Obviously, go as straight as you can. And late as apex, as you the can. first one. It's like a, a slalom. Always do a late apex on the first corner in a slalom. Okay. And then coming out of this, mm. I think you break a little bit and then you go and you break again. You've got yeah. to give it a blip and then break again. You do a blip of throttle before that braking zone. And now his, his tires are really starting to go off. But look at our last lap, 201. I mean, it's really like. That's really slow. Re relatively, you know what I mean? All right, we, are, we should be on the last lap, 13. I think, did you see the white flag? No. I think that was the white flag coming around that corner. Now, uh, again, the black car is like to my right, he's to my left, he's right on me. So you're really thinking about I'm what's behind totally you. I'm totally playing defense right now. And we as spectators... Oh, and I screwed that up. Do you see that? Yeah. Oh, man. I broke way too hard there. I'm starting to drive in my mirrors <laughs> a little bit because I know it's the last lap and you get a little bit excitable. It's interesting, too, because <laughs> when there's a bunny ahead of you or me or whomever, we tend to drive much faster trying to catch the bunny ahead. Yep, but when there's somebody too. in your mirrors, that's a whole different dynamic. So it's really not just going out and driving your own line as though you had the track to yourself. It's not at all like a time trial. Well, even time trials, you don't have to track to yourself, but. All right, coming up on the last yeah, I mean, corner, not so just now it's the just, next. Yeah, it's like, okay. He's not gonna pass me going in, you know, on the inside here. So as long as I get around this corner smoothly, I know I'm gonna hold off with it. So there we go. I think this is the checkered flag. Yeah. Yep. All so right. pretty good, pretty good race. How did you feel though? You're not usually in fifth place. You're usually much higher. I mean, does it bum you out or do you just shake it off? I drove well that race. I feel like I, you know, I qualified in seventh. I finished fifth. I gained a couple spots. I beat some drivers that are very exceptional drivers. I was on crap tires that were completely shot and I still managed to get fifth. So I'm fairly happy with my performance. I feel like we need to go out there with kind of on par with equal equipment next time. 
and just see what we really are all about, you know? So we need to hear from you how you like the format with asking questions, or is it really obnoxious? And just get back to Brian talking you through his racecraft. Do you enjoy the Brian talking through racecraft as opposed to just showing the track line? We would love your feedback. So please, in the they got a place to get feedback. Yeah. Comments and like section. and subscribe, please. Subscribing makes YouTube show these videos to more people, and it and we need that because maybe someday we'll get enough money to buy a new pair of tires. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. See Bye. you later.